What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at the best cameras for Instagram. Now Instagram has a really specific look and style that gets attention on the platform. So we're looking at the best cameras and the lenses for both photos and videos to take your account to the next level. Let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we review camera gear here, all the way from entry level to high level professional gear, plus filmmaking techniques for both photo and video to take your work to the next level. And as always, all the products we talk about today will be down below in the description so you can easily find them. So make sure to check them out. Let's get into the video. So the first camera on the list is the Canon T7 and it's slightly better looking older brother, the Canon T7i. Both of these cameras are fairly affordable, great beginner cameras, and should fit the needs of most content creators or someone that just wants to shoot as a hobby. And a big plus of the T7i is the ability to flip the screen around so you can see yourself and you can shoot your photos without needing any help. Both of these cameras feature the 24 megapixel Canon sensor, and it's the same sensor that you find in higher end Canon models that cost $1,500 to $2,000. This is a really good sensor and delivers fantastic images. The Canon T7 shoots at three frames per second for photos and does video at 1080p up to 30 frames per second and 60 at 720p. Now you might be thinking 720p is a bit low, but for Instagram, you really can't tell the difference because of the way the videos are encoded. Just make sure you export your video at a high bit rate. The autofocus on the T7 is fantastic for photos, but for video, it's a bit lackluster. If you feel like you would want this camera with a little bit more horsepower, I recommend Moving up to the Canon T7i. It does six frames per second for photos and does 1080p all the way up to 60 frames per second. Plus it has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is phenomenal. And I mean, absolutely phenomenal in video. You literally can just set it and forget it. It does the job every single time. And you even see a bump in autofocusing speeds and more autofocus points when it comes to photos. And one of the reasons to get either of these cameras is the color science. These images will look amazing right out of the camera. Canon is known for having really good color science. The blues are just the perfect shade of blues. The greens are nice and saturated and everyone's skin tone looks perfect. People tend to look very attractive. If you want something that's really true to life, these are definitely the cameras to get. I find Canon cameras the easiest to work with when it comes to editing photos and video. The image and the colors is already 90% of what I want and I just have to take it into my phone or laptop and fine tune the last details. It saves me a ton of time and makes creating content with these cameras that much easier. In terms of the body and the physical design, the two cameras are almost identical with the T7i having a flip out screen. Both cameras are small and compact and have Canon's EF mount so you can use any of Canon's popular lenses. Canon has the biggest selection of lenses. It's really easy to get really affordable and quality glass from Canon. Both cameras are really durable and you can really put them through their paces. However, they are both made of plastic, so I would be careful taking them around moisture or any kind of dirt or grit. And I would definitely not drop these cameras. These cameras maybe get one or two drops max. And the software and menus in this camera is very straightforward and simple. Pretty much anyone can pick them up and get comfortable with this camera very, very quickly. Creating content and images with this camera is extremely simple. If you're doing photos without too much moving action, the T7 should be just fine. And if you're doing videos, this camera is great for videos as long as you don't need to shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second, or you don't need the camera to do autofocus in video for you. But if you need those things, I definitely recommend moving up to the T7i for an extra $300. You're getting a way better video autofocusing system and double the shooting rate for photos. Also a big part of what makes your image appealing on Instagram are the lenses. For Canon cameras, I recommend the 24 and 40 millimeter Canon lenses. Both of them are really, really high quality lenses are extremely affordable. When I say high quality, I've seen these lenses used on professional TV shows. The glass is very simple and very high quality. They come in a plastic body, which is why they're so cheap. And I've often seen professionals rehouse these lenses into full metal bodies for professional use. Both of these lenses are really good. And if you just have to pick two lenses for Canon, the 24 and 40 mil, you need nothing else. The next camera on the list is the Nikon D3500. When it comes to photos, this camera is quite the powerhouse. I really recommend this to someone that's looking to do photos first and maybe a little bit of videos as a bonus. This camera does do 1080p video. However, the video straight out of the Nikon camera is pretty mediocre. 
The Nikon camera has a 24 megapixel sensor and 14 bit RAW, which is about the same as the Canon camera. However, I find that the Nikon cameras have a little bit more dynamic range and flexibility in their RAW codec when it comes to photo editing. Also, the Nikon camera does five frames per second versus the Canon T7's three frames per second or the T7's six frames per second. Personally, I think when it comes to photos, the Nikon is definitely a better deal. The Nikon camera also does 1080p at 60 frames per second. However, the colors in the Nikon camera aren't the greatest and they're very mediocre right out of the camera. They're definitely gonna take a little bit of finessing and grading to really get them to look as good as the Canon. I think of the video on this camera as kind of a bonus. I really recommend this to someone that's doing photos first. And once in a while, if you wanna shoot a little bit of video, it is available to you and you don't have to get a separate camera. In terms of body and design, it's a really well-built camera. You can definitely put it through its paces. You could drop it a few times, really be rough with it. It's a very, very solid camera. The only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that it does not have a swivel screen on it, which would make it a lot easier to shoot video. However, this is really made to be a photo camera. The buttons on this camera are well laid out. They're nice and clicky, and there's really nothing on this camera that made it difficult to work with. The only complaint that I have with this camera, and this is something for Nikon cameras in general, the software and the menus aren't particularly intuitive and they take a bit of learning. Overall, this camera is really aimed at someone that wants to do a lot of portraiture, fashion, food, or product photography. If you want a camera that has a lot of horsepower, but you want it at a pretty affordable price, this is definitely the camera to start with. This is a great way to get into Nikon cameras. Nikon cameras are really known for being powerhouses when it comes to photos. This is a camera that will not make you feel limited by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to photos. So one of my favorite lenses from Nikon is actually the 50 millimeter 1.8 F lens that I just bought not that long ago. It's about $216 USD. It's very sharp, it's very fast because it's a 1.8 lens. It's perfect for portraiture. A 50 millimeter is going to give you that shallow depth of field or blurry background. It's going to give you a very stunning portrait if you're doing fashion, this will be great. And this is really, really good for food photography. And when it comes to Instagram, the images that often do the best are the ones that are very immersive or show off a lot of detail. And the next camera on the list is the Sony a6000 or the slightly newer Sony a6100. Both of these cameras are a good balance of photo and video. Both of these cameras have a 24 megapixel sensor and shoot 11 frames per second when it comes to photos in full Sony RAW in continuous autofocus that's pretty impressive for this price point because if you compare this to the Nikon and Sony, you're almost getting double the frame rate in photos in continuous autofocus. And the autofocus in both of these cameras is amazing for both photos and video. Sony is king of the hill when it comes to autofocus and they're literally leading the industry by five years. As for video, the Sony a6000 does 1080p up to 60 frames per second. However, there is no 4K or super slow-mo at 120 frames per second. But for an extra $200 to $250, the Sony a6100 has 4K up to 30 frames per second and 1080p at 120 frames per second. However, neither of these cameras have cinema profiles built in. For that, we're gonna have to get a little bit deeper into this list. But both of these cameras have stunning video quality and it is more than good enough for Instagram. As for the body and design, both cameras are small, compact, lightweight, and extremely easy to take around with you. The only thing is they are Sony cameras and the battery life is not the greatest, but shouldn't be too much of a worry if you have a spare battery. And one of the big benefits of the Sony a6100 is that it has a flip up screen where you can actually see yourself as you're taking video and photo. This is extremely useful if you're someone that has to take photos of yourself without any help or videos of yourself. Also, it makes it a pretty decent vlogging and selfie camera. The color science out of Sony cameras is definitely not the best and these images are meant to be heavily edited in post, but the big benefit of buying a Sony camera is that you get so much raw horsepower, almost double what most of its competition from Canon and Nikon offers. Overall, I'd recommend this camera to someone that's an absolute photo and video nerd that really wants to take their images, tweak it in Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe, and really create high level art for their Instagram accounts. These cameras give you a ton of flexibility for creating your own unique look in content. But for Instagram, you definitely wanna be using prime lenses to get that blurry depth of field. For that, I recommend using the Sony 50 millimeter F 1.8. It's a pretty affordable lens and it's tack sharp. And on top of that, there's a Sony 85 millimeter F 1.8. It's just as sharp as a 50 millimeter. It just depends what focal length you want. And now we're moving into the more professional and definitely more expensive cameras. But if you're serious about your Instagram game and you wanna do this professionally, make sure to check out the next two cameras. Next up, we have the Sony a7 III, a 24 megapixel 
full frame beast of a camera. It does 10 frames per second in full Sony RAW. I realize that's a frame slower than the cheaper Sony cameras, but remember, this is a full frame camera. And video wise, this camera is no slouch either. It does 1080p up to 120 frames per second, which is pretty impressive, and 4K in gorgeous 24 and 30 frames per second. But one thing that is the same as other Sony cameras is the magnificent autofocus. It is fast, sharp, and reliable in every condition, even low light. This camera actually supports AI-based face and object tracking. Again, AI stands for artificial intelligence. This thing isn't going to make your coffee for you, but it is a very, very good algorithm for face and object tracking. It is darn near perfect. And one really unique thing about this camera is that it's an absolute low light monster. You can easily get clean video and photos at 20 to 30,000 ISO. If you do any kind of low light work or work with available light, this is definitely the camera for you. As for the body and design, it's small and compact, but it is a lot bigger than the Sony a6000 and 6100. The buttons on this camera are really well laid out and they finally put the record button in a good position. It's no longer awkwardly on the side. It has a nice flip screen that allows you to get low and high angle shots. Sadly, you can't flip it around to see yourself. Sadly, this camera is not weather sealed, so I'd definitely be careful taking this camera on moisture or dirt. But you can buy third party body covering to kind of weather seal your camera. Because of how small and lightweight this camera is, I definitely recommend it for traveling and they've also updated the Sony battery style on this camera. Now I easily get three to four hours of runtime on a single charge. And you put all of that together and you get a pretty amazing camera package. In terms of lenses, it's pretty much the same as the other Sony lenses. Just make sure you're getting the full frame version of this lens. And the last camera is definitely the most exciting and interesting, the Fuji X-T30. I fundamentally believe that the Fuji cameras are the best cameras for Instagram simply because of their ultra clean sensor that does not break down even at high ISOs and a super unique look that really sets your work apart from everyone else on Instagram. This camera has a 26 megapixel Fuji sensor and also the X4 processor, both of which combine to give you extremely clean images even at high ISOs and even after you crop in, you'll notice that the grain is less like digital noise and more like film grain these cameras look very, very close to 35 millimeter film. This camera shoots photos at eight frames per second in mechanical mode, which isn't the fastest, but with a slight 1.3 crop, it can actually shoot up to 30 frames per second, which is bananas fast. You could easily do sports, dance, any kind of high action shooting with this camera. As for video, it does 1080p up to 120 frames per second at 200 megabits per second. That's actually double what Sony offers you, and it's still cheaper than the Sony camera. As for 4K, it does 4K at both 23 and 30, similar to the Sony. And you might be like, wait, then isn't this camera just a better deal than the Sony? I should probably just buy this instead of the Sony. Not exactly. The autofocus in this camera, not the greatest. For photos, it's absolutely fine. Great face tracking, fast, reliable. It's phenomenal. But when it comes to video, it's like a six or seven out of 10. It's not very sticky. It tends to hunt a lot. And it really depends what lens you're using. Sometimes the autofocus is very smooth. Sometimes it tends to hunt. The Sony cameras have very reliable and consistent autofocus. The Fuji, when it comes to video, is pretty hit and miss. But what really sets the Fuji cameras apart is the built-in looks. So a quick history lesson. Fuji actually used to make the 35mm celluloid film for Hollywood movies and your 35mm cameras. They've taken the look and like the style of that 35mm look, made it into a digital algorithm, put it into your camera, so you get these really unique looks that you would normally have to apply a filter for or do a bunch of Photoshop for, it's built right into your camera. And that's one of the things that gives this camera such a unique look. The color looks in this camera are really artsy, avant-garde, and I definitely don't recommend shooting corporate or something where you're not allowed to really express yourself. This is definitely an artist camera and I don't recommend doing headshots or real estate work with it. Although the standard profile on this camera is still gorgeous, so you could do that if you wanted to, but to really utilize this camera, I recommend making art with it. The camera's made of anodized aluminum, so it's extremely robust. You can really put it through its paces, drop it a few times, and it's weather sealed. The layout for the buttons on this camera is really unique. It has a shutter dial and an ISO dial, more like the old vintage cameras, but it still has all the modern buttons like a front dial and a back dial for changing your aperture and shutter. Whether you wanna shoot with an old style camera or a new style camera, they have you covered. As for lenses, there's really no such thing as a bad Fuji lens, but there's two lenses that I absolutely love. The 50 millimeter F 3.5 lens, it's very small, extremely compact, allows you to keep a small profile, but it's very sharp. And despite being a 3.5 F stop, it gives you a very, very shallow depth of field. 
And the other Fuji lens that I absolutely adore is the Fuji 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8. I'm pretty impressed that this lens has this focal length, 16 to 55, I have everything covered. Plus it's 2.8, so I'm gonna get plenty of shallow depth of field and blurry background. It's a very sharp lens. These two are my absolute favorite lenses and I definitely recommend just checking them out if you can. Well guys, that's pretty much it for the best cameras on Instagram. All the cameras we talked about today will be down below in the description. And if you guys have any more questions about what camera is right for you, make sure to hit me up in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. And if you're still watching the video, make sure to leave a like, it helps the video out and lets me know what kind of content you guys are vibing with. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews, more filmmaking technique, and all the fun stuff we do here on the channel. See you guys in the next video.